These sorts of videos have been coming up on my feed lately. Seems like an infinite zoom effect. I saw this, I was like, how do we do this? How is this done? Upon further research, I think that these specific videos, examples that I have, were done using AI. I know nothing about AI, so I'm gonna try this without AI, which I don't know if that's possible, and use stock footage and photos instead. So we'll see what we end up with. Essentially, this is me versus AI. Am I the one who's gonna be taking this on for society? I mean, maybe, maybe it's my time to shine, but I will take you along my journey. I will share with you what I have learned and we'll hope for the best. After trying various things, I've found a nice formula for achieving this without AI. And I've been able to keep this all in After Effects. First thing is creating a scene. Now your scenes can be as in depth as you like, but obviously the more elements you layer onto it, the better. It'll be similar to creating a collage. I decided to start with an underwater scene, so I went ahead and pulled a bunch of stock images to use. We're gonna create a new composition. I'm gonna do a 4K 16 by nine sequence and I'll start with this blue ocean as a background. First up, we have this image with coral, and I wanna remove this coral on the right here from the background and add it in as its own layer. Now, there's a ton of programs that you can use to do this. For example, in Photoshop, you can use many selection tools to remove your subject from the background and export it as a PNG. But I personally prefer to keep everything in one program, so here's how I do it in After Effects. Obviously, you can draw your own detailed mask with the pen tool, but this is super time consuming, so instead, I'm gonna go up and select the Roto Brush tool and then draw over the subject. This will give you a nice detailed cutout even take it a step further and use the refine edge tool on the edges of the coral to get those details. Now the issue is that roto brushing will slow down your playback and it will take time to render in your timeline, which we don't want. And since these are photos and not video, we can easily turn our roto brush selection into a mask so our timeline will run much more smoothly. Select the layer, go up to layer, click auto trace, make sure channel is set to alpha and uncheck apply to a new layer. So this just took all that roto brush data and created into a mask. Go ahead and delete your roto brush effect and highlight all your masks, change them to subtract, and there you have it. I'm gonna repeat this for all the different elements that I want in the scene, but we need to have a center point to zoom into for the infinite zoom. I cut out this large coral reef. We can use this little shadow area as our zoom through point. Turn on the title action safe grid, line up the reef with the center point, select the pen tool and draw a mask. In the mask drop down, change to subtract. Now we have the hole cut out. And we're gonna do the same for the blue ocean background. And there you have the area where we will zoom into the next scene. But first, I'm gonna add some more elements, like a shark, some more reefs, as well as adding in some shadows to make it feel more 3D. Onto the next scene where I use the outline of a cave to match the coral reef, use some stock footage of a waterfall, which I rotoscoped out, and finally cut out the center point to zoom in through. Once you made all the scenes you like, it's time to create the zoom. So we're gonna go ahead and make a new composition and drag all of our scenes into it. Right click, create a new null object that will rename zoom in. We'll highlight all the scenes and parent them to the zoom in null object. So basically that means whatever we do to this null object will apply to all the scenes. I'll first zoom into my first scene and lower the scale of scene two so that it properly matches up. And we can repeat this later on with each following scene. Now it's time to animate the actual zoom in. So in the zoom in layer under transform, I'll set a keyframe at the beginning for scale, move my playhead forward and scale this in as much as I physically can. And at this point, we can also adjust the scale of the next scene. So the formula is to keep scaling in and adding keyframes, adjust the scale of the next scene and repeat. Now, if you don't like the pacing of the zoom in animation, you can go ahead into your graph editor and play around with the scale keyframes until you get a proper flow. This is how I have mine set up. Last thing is you'll want to toggle on motion blur for all your scenes and you'll end up with this.
What's fun is you can take it a step further and animate the different layers and elements in each scene to create more life. Now, maybe this isn't as good as AI, but you can really customize it. And I don't know, there's something nice about crafting your own visuals instead of relying on AI to do it. But for fun, I bit the bullet and I tried using the generative fill tool in Photoshop to recreate the same scenes and compare the two. And I'm gonna be honest, the workflow using AI was significantly faster. It wasn't hard to recreate the scenes pretty accurately and I had to do way less compositing to make things blend together. And this is just me comparing the workflow I did without AI. This doesn't even include those crazy infinite zooms we see online that are much more seamless. I will say I do slightly prefer the look of the original, but without AI, it took me probably like five to six hours to create that whole sequence. And with AI, it probably took me like 30 minutes. So I'd say based on how long it took me to create with and without and how close the results came to one another, I'd say AI wins, unfortunately. And that is my journey, figuring out the infinite zoom effect without using AI. Considering it's just me, myself, and I, I think I took AI on pretty well. I put up a good fight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I will see you in the next one.